Part two of our mega preview with Javier Reyes of Lockdown Padres discussing breakout studs for both teams, what happened to Joe Musgrove, and I even end the podcast with some thoughts on the most recent series against the L.A. Dodgers. You are Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening to who? Always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer. So please go check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com to see all of my latest work. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. On today's Locked on Dimebacks podcast, we got part two with Javier Reyes of Locked on Padres discussing everything from breakout studs to what's wrong with Joe Musgrove to me discussing by myself without Javier my latest thoughts on this most recent series from the D-backs and the New York, uh, not the New York Yankees, but the L.A. Dodgers. So we're going to be talking about all that on today's Locked on Dimebacks crossover but just first want to say thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms, so please continue to tell your friends, including Locked on Diamondbacks on YouTube. Our goal is 2,000 subs by the All-Star break, so please hit subscribe to Locked on Diamondbacks on YouTube. But now let's get into that conversation with Javier Reyes of Locked On Padres. Back here, part two, Javier Reyes, Locked On Padres, here with Miller Thomas of Locked On Dimebacks, of course. Javi, on the last podcast, we talked about some of the struggling stars from the Bogarts, the Machados, and the Tatises, and the Carols. I actually never said, I'm, I'm still fully confident in Tatis becoming a superstar by the end of the season. I have a, a friendly wager with one of my friends that he will finish top eight in MVP voting in the National League. I just feel I just feel pretty confident in that one, despite the numbers mm-hmm. right now. Now, Machado, this is a year or two where he has not looked as good, mm-hmm. so a little bit of a concern there, but I do think there's probably more confidence in him bouncing mm-hmm. back than a Xander Bogarts. But when you look at the rest of the Padres lineup, there is one guy in particular that stands out in a big way statistically compared to the rest of the guys. A former five-tool, number one overall prospect in Major League Baseball who in his 11th season, I believe, is finally having the breakout <laughs> that we've all been waiting for. I am talking about maybe the San Diego Padres' favorite player, the Friars' faithful favorite player, Jaraxon Profar. Javi, what has gone on? Is this man on PEDs? I don't want to throw out any accusations, but 11 season breakout for Profar. Where did this come from, Javi? First of all, it's Jerickson. I don't want you going all Jurassic on me. Uh, Did you just watch Jurassic Park? That's what it was, right? You just watched Jurassic Park. Is that what I said? Yeah, you said Jurassic. (laughs) Jurassic Profar. It just rolled off the tongue. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jaraxon is, I might like say that privately, like whatever he hits home run. You know what I mean? Um, And I've said his name, last name weird before too. But anyway, um, first of all, don't appreciate you throwing out the the three letter word. Um, I don't appreciate that, but that's fair. It's funny that you said like most likable, probably based just off of my tweets that I send out every three seconds about him. Jerickson Profar is why I love baseball, like straight up. Like this is why I love this sport because there is no player out there for at least contending teams. Maybe there's some other under the radar ones I don't know about that had less signs that they would be good than Jerks and Profar. Yeah. If you go by fan graphs, wins above replacement, quite literally the worst qualified player in all of baseball last year. He was minus 10, like 13 defensive runs saved minus 10 outs above average. He couldn't play defense. And by the way, he was in cores, right? Like the, to add insult to injury, you were in one of the most hitter friendly ballparks comes to the Padres and he's Ruth. Like it's, it's unbelievable. He just, he's coming off an eight game winning streak 
We'll see if he continues that against the D-backs. And I've said it many times on my pod. I don't think that it's totally impossible that he replicates what he did with the Padres two years ago before he left and ends up going to the Rockies. He tried to get paid and whatnot. Um, Where's like a two and a half win player. I think that is absolutely legit. But Millard, it keeps going. You know what I mean? At some point, I'm like, is this just a new thing? And I'll say one thing also. If he stinks it for the rest of the way, it will literally be worth it just for this month that he's put together because okay. all they did was one year, one million. But it's been amazing. It is a evidence of vibes mattering, right? All that stuff. But this is a guy who currently leads the Padres. I believe he still leads the Padres and WRC plus uh, with 178, which is insane. His weighted on base is 420. So shouts to him. He's been killing it there. Um, just unbelievable stuff. And the big thing I think that has been with him is he's walking a lot. He puts together tough, good at bats. Is he always going to get a hit? No. And he's, is he always going to draw a walk? No. But he sees a lot of pitches, which is why he's been moved up to be the leadoff hitter, which is crazy. But it's true. And he's been he's just been a monster. And ever since, you know, he started blowing up more with the the Will Smith comment. Maybe he's just on some revenge thing. Maybe he's just angry. Maybe he's walking into the plate like Kendrick Labar in his diss track mm. with Drake, where he's just like angry. And he's just like, oh, oh Kendrick said, oh, 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 Miller said, whoa, 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 easy, easy, easy. Okay, maybe he's not that angry. I don't want to say Profar's that angry. But um, he's just. Will been- Smith, I hate your hair. I hate your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. Um, I think that Profar, I just need a little bit more time because I just need to see because I'm just so like not appalled, like just taken aback by what's been happening with this guy. Uh, We're like every statistic with the exception of a couple, like say his barrel percentage has been a little bit down, but we're a month in. And for people who are commenting, Oh, well, Javi stop. He started off hot in the 2022 season, 2022 season. He had about a 116, 122 WRC plus to start, which is great. This year he's got a 166 to start. Like guys, that's a huge jump. So I'm starting to wonder He's it is the 11th year, but he's 31. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, but if this keeps up, even if he he has a decline or whatever, and he, but if he's this guy who's going to have a high batting average, if he's going to have a 13 percent walk rate, 15 percent strikeout rate, maybe hit you 20 home runs. You know, we're talking about like one of the greater transformations. It's like a not to the, the high upside tier, but like a Jose Bautista level transformation yeah jose batista for those who don't remember like wasn't anything for a while they made some adjustments to his swing or whatever and then he had that like six-year stretch where he was like one of the you know 10 best players in baseball for a little bit i'm not saying that profile is going to be one of the 10 best players in baseball but that type of unexpected turnaround to becoming a relevant player that's what we're looking at with profile right now and it's i've been loving it and it's fantastic and i'm happy and joyful even if the Padres sometimes let me down, Drake's and Profar has not. Yeah, it's crazy. I think the Jose Batista call is a good one because really when you look at Batista's numbers, like those first five, six, seven years of his career, he did absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden, 54 home runs, breakout season. Then he's like a 40 home run guy like for the rest of his career after age 30. And for Profar, you look at his career numbers. Uh, right now, it's 242 average 714 OPS so he's never been a guy to statistically ever put up big numbers or anything and right now with the pace that he's on obviously still small sample size 34 games but he has 21 he has 21 RBIs his career high is 77 he has 17 walks his career high is 73 so he's probably if he continues this at like a 70% clip for the rest of the season. He's probably going to shatter every career record that he's ever put up in a singular season before. So I don't know how many guys in major league history have we seen scuffle the first decade of their career. And then all of a sudden look like an MVP <laughs> candidate that 11 season. Like it, it's wild to say, right? I, uh, yeah. I, 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 the only explanation I could have is that he was a former top prospect for a reason. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just because he was, I mean, he not even maybe like he was derailed completely by multiple shoulder injuries that just took away a lot of his power. But dude, I don't know, man, like I'm starting to believe it. It's, it's a little bit too much for me to not believe it. He's still not great defensively, which is one of the reasons they have to pay, take, um, take him out of the game. Sometimes they bring in Jose Azokar. Um, He hasn't been like dreadful, but he's not a plus defender. So that's going to keep some of his, his upside a little bit down, but as a batter, this is the type of stuff that teams that want to contend need 
they need those unexpected guys who step up. And for one million bucks, that's what the Padres are getting right now. It's incredible, man. It's incredible. Crazy value. I think for the D-backs, the guy that I would compare him compare Profar the most to, I guess, on the D-backs would be like a Quetzal Marte who is finally back to looking like that 2019 version of Quetzal Marte because a couple of years ago, 2022, felt like maybe Quetzal Marte was in the decline or something. Like he had a really bad 2022 season, 240 average, 727 OPS, over 137 games. The 2020 year also wasn't so good for him. So it was like, Two of the next three years after his MVP candidacy type season, he wasn't super productive. And then that year in between, he was dealing with injuries. So it was kind of like a three-year hiatus where Marte was just kind of scuffling. You really didn't know what ceiling Mm -hmm. of player he was after that 2019 season. And this year, he's just back to being a hitting machine at the top of the lineup for the D-backs. He's been incredible, specifically in the first inning, batting like over 400, like a 1,300 OPS, been one of the reasons why the D-backs have been so good at scoring in the first inning this season. So when I'm looking at which two players can make the biggest impact offensively for both our teams. I'm probably keying in on both Ketel Marte and Draxon Profar because they seem to have the two hottest bats for our our Draxon. You did it again. Draxon? Do I keep saying Draxon? You keep doing Draxon. It's kind of funny though. I kind of like it. Draxon? Draxon? That's what you got to do. All right. Draxon Profar. (laughs) <laughs> and uh Ketel Marte, the two pillars of each team in their lineup. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. As everyone so, expected, yeah. As everyone expected. Maybe Marte, but pro far, definitely, at least not on my bingo card. I mean, I I've, I've ran him off for what eight straight seasons now. I, mm-hmm. I would like to think my gamble has been correct on most of those seasons. But this year, he has re- rewritten the history books on his career. I'm very curious when we have our crossovers in the future what the stats are going to be saying for Profar. Because if it's the all-star mm-hmm. break, if it's three quarters into the season and he's still like a 290, 850 OPS guy, you know, 120 <laughs> DRC plus, like that would be absolutely insane. And I, I wouldn't even know what to say. That would say be nuts. That would be it would nuts. be nuts. I can't wait to see how it all transpires. I think both of our teams, while have they've had some dif- like – seismically disappointing with Corbin Carroll and Xander Bogarts. They've also had some great production from the, it's so funny how evenly matched up these teams are on paper. We're like our best star could go to toe to toe with your best star, et cetera, et cetera. And like this year, Jake Cronenworth has been making a bounce back. He's hitting the ball harder than ever playing great defense. And then Christian Walker, he's amazing too. And dare I say one of the like 10 most underrated batters in the mm-hmm. sport. I know he hit a walk off the other day. Um, for my FanDuel hobies, hey. let's just say uh, against Michael King, Christian Walker, Uh-oh. King's given up a lot of home runs. Uh, I I would look into it. That might happen this weekend. Christian Walker might hit something to Mars uh, off of Michael King. It's totally possible that may happen. But um, yeah, man, I just think that we'll see how it transpires as the year goes out. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what Corbin Carroll's numbers look like. I can't wait to see if Eugenio Suarez gets hot, right? Like I can't wait to see if Jack Peterson, who by WRC plus has been the best batter on the team. And that's not all, obviously can tell Marte adds a little bit more, but uh, you know, just as a hitter in his role has been successful, which he always is low key, by the way, Jack Peterson, like everywhere he goes, if you use him in the right role, which isn't like an everyday player who hits against both righties and lefties and doesn't play a lot of defense, he's going to hit. He always does. Like he's actually really effective at it. Low key um, in his role. though, That's the key thing is in his role. You can't just in a vacuum. You can't just put this guy anywhere and it's going to work, but um, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't he's, wait. A, he's a huge X factor with all the righties that the Padres are going to be throwing. I mean, Jack Peterson, like you said, outside Ketel Marte, you can you could probably make the argument Jack Peterson is actually the hottest D-backs hitter. He just doesn't play every day. But in this series with the Padres throwing out some righties, hopefully we could get a big Jack performance going against, you know, he loves playing in the NOS and going against an NOS team. Hopefully he could come through against the San Diego Padres. Now, speaking of Jack Peterson, that's an off-season move there. And I want to ask you, Javi, about one of the off-season moves that the Padres pulled off that I thought was really really savvy and we'll talk about that in segment number two passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive 
eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicles and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, here back here on the Locked on Dimebacks, Locked on Padres crossover with Javi Reyes. Javi, one of the sneaky moves that the Padres did this offseason was not handing out a big bag to their closer, Josh Hader, who has gone to the Houston Astros and not really been that good. Meanwhile, you look at the stats for your little closer, Robert (laughs) Suarez, and he's got, what, a sub-1 ERA? How savvy of a move was that by the San Diego Padres? Did you expect Josh Hader? Like, did you see in the numbers? Were you were you thinking, you know what? Smart move by the Padres to let him walk and let the Astros end up signing him. There wasn't anything in numbers that I think I saw. Uh, he had like a career year. It was fantastic. The bad vibes with Hader were mostly just like, behavioral in the sense that like it was really annoying that he would never go more than three outs now there's a ton of reasons for that the way the brewers treated him and probably should know that and you got to know look it's okay for the player to be like i'm looking after myself until i get paid because i saw what milwaukee did to me okay blah 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 blah. but even still like i think players know that too and it, it just left a bad taste in your mouth that it's like dude we're still in playoff contention you like won't go more than three outs like it was just really really weird like i don't think that's gonna end you you know what i mean like i, I just don't but now he's really struggling and on the Robert Suarez side of it, or actually with Hater, I don't think there was numbers thing. The only thing that you can maybe argue is like a general sports thing, which is always like someone who peaks right before, not peaks, but in Hater's case necessarily. Well, it might be at this point, but because he's always been good is what I'm trying to say. It's not like this came out of nowhere. So, but you may be wondering, oh, maybe he saved his great season there and now it can't possibly, he can't possibly replicate it. I think he'll be better, but it's been kind of crazy how bad he's been. Both him and Ryan Presley, by the way, uh, of the Astros have both been bad. It's been one of the weirder developments uh, that I can think of in the league. Just frankly, like I don't understand how both of these elite closers have just completely fallen off. I think it's one of the weirder things going on right now. Um and and some other guys in that rotation too but i think that with the padres robert suarez had was capable of this um two years ago you know his rookie year basically old rookie uh was awesome like he really was this guy had an electric fastball it's still up there it gets he throws gas like he absolutely does and while yes he's infamous for the harper home run which frankly i think is a manager issue because they shouldn't have had him in the game in the first place but um He's done something like this before, and that was his first season, 2.27 ERA. His strikeout rate was enormous. I don't think it's going to stay this way. I just don't like how he's he's increased his stuff, don't get me wrong, he looks solid, but I don't think he's in the elite tier. But bottom line, though, is he has looked infinitely better. I think he's located his pitches better, but he's not striking out nearly as many batters as he did that first year. So at some point, I'm like, all right, when is the regression going to kick in? Hopefully not anytime soon. But one thing I do know that's for sure is that he's been awesome and has been much needed for this Padres bullpen. And the other savvy move they did was they gave up Scott Barlow for Eniel De Los Santos, who's Mm. also been awesome and much better than Scott Barlow. So shots to the Padres. Who would have known Robert Suarez and Santos greater than sign um, Scott Barlow and Josh Hader. So that's that's kind of been like one of the cool, like you said, savvy things they did this offseason is they retool their bullpen. Yeah, Yuki Matsui has been fantastic. They completely retooled their bullpen outside of Tom Cosgrove and Robert Suarez, basically. Um, and they've gotten big contributions, and I'm hoping you might see Adrian Morejon, who has been a failed starter in a lot of ways, but he's been showing some good stuff as a reliever. So the Padres' bullpen's great, man, and they just called up this kid, Jeremiah Estrada. That So when you look at the Padres and you look at their rotation, this is why they've stayed in games. Dylan Cease, who we talked about 
in the first segment on the previous episode, and then their bullpen, where basically everyone has been phenomenal uh, for the most part. So, and and I don't think it's fluky either. I think they've been really good. So it's really cool to see that they opted for we'll spend some money, but instead we trade Barlow. Right, you take his salary and get Matsui Busako, and then you save some money getting rid of Josh Hader to put elsewhere. And look at the bullpen; it's been really solid with Wandy Peralta being the weak link of the team, and even he he's still pretty good. Yeah, maybe this series really comes down to like the D back starting pitching versus the Padres pen, because like you said, mm. the bullpen is more the strength for you guys as compared to the rotation outside of a uh, Dylan Cease. But for the D backs. It's been the opposite. Their pen has been really bad the whole season, especially in high leverage games, late in close games. The D-backs have not been able to preserve leads. They've been not able to keep it to one run games. And the bullpen has been a big issue for this team this year. You got guys stepping up in the rotation like the Slades that we talked about in the last podcast. Fott has been fine. Ryan Nelson is expected to start the finale coming off the injured list, but he's been better in his last couple starts. So from a rotation standpoint, despite all the injuries, I don't feel bad that bad about this D-back starting rotation. It's that bullpen that gives D-back fans a lot of problems and issues. So this series might come down to the pitching. Padres, Penn versus the D-back starters, and whichever one of those groups can be better might lead to who can win this series. And, you know, past the other in, you know what, the NLS standings, and who knows, whoever wins the series might end up being second in the NLS when it is all said and done by the end of the season. But, uh, Javi, I did want to ask you, what has gone on with Joe Musgrove this season? Because I do have him on a fancy team, and he's been not good for me. He's been shaky. I think he's still working off some rust. It was alluded to in an athletic article by Dennis Lynn and in conversation with him. He had, he was shut down with injury last year. I think that's still affecting him a little bit. And I think that that's evidenced by he didn't throw a ball faster than 93 miles per hour, which he usually is like a 94 guy until recently. And he's been doing that more recently and in his early starts. He was not doing that. So he's slowing, throwing short. He was missing his spots, but I still think he has it again. He had a really nice start against the Reds. Some his curveball was working at points. Slider was working too. So with him, I would give it some time. He's not a guy who's going to have um, like dynamite. Oh my gosh, seven runs, one hit, thirteen Ks. But mm-hmm. he's going to be as steady as they come. I just don't. There was no warning sign outside the injury, which could be something that affects him for a long time. Hopefully, it doesn't. But. Outside of that, I mean, this has been a guy who's averaged like a 3.04 ERA over these last four years. He's not a one-hit wonder. He's not a no-hitter wonder when he threw the one no-hitter against the Rangers. Like, he's been great. ERA by year, even the last year with the Pirates, 3.86 isn't that bad, right? And not to mention his peripherals were better that year too. Then 3.18, 2.93, 3.05. I think he's going to get better, but it has been a bad start. But I I just have some confidence that it'll be better. Or at the very least, he won't be this six era guy right like he's gonna at least be better maybe he can do what brandon fat's doing right like at the at minimum and that's what i'm expecting from him so so don't drop him from your fantasy team uh bogarts okay. maybe yeah i think it okay. might be time man i think it might be time yeah you might have to well this is gonna be a big weekend series for me personally when checking out my fantasy lineup with the Bogarts, the Tatises, the Machados, the Musgroves. I even have Robert Suarez on team. I even have Ooh. Drax and Profar, Drixen, Profar <laughs> in the league that we're in together. I picked him up this week, Javi. You're just sitting there on the waiver wire. Locked on Padres. We did not pick up Drixen, Profar, guys. Crazy. Just sitting there on the waiver wire. So big matchup for the NL West. Big matchup for the fantasy standings. Javi. Want to give a prediction before we wrap up today's podcast? It's no. Always like, it's always like <laughs> two out of three, right? That's what that's like the default answer for anything. That's, that's why I was so upset. First series of the year, I predicted that the Padres would win three out of four and just kill the Giants. Everyone's like, look at this idiot. And I'm like, I tried to be different. I didn't just do the, oh, they'll split it or whatever. No, I was like, yeah, they're going to kill them. And they didn't. But. Yeah, I, I think that this is going to be a series like you. There might be some fun in this series. I think we might get some really good offense from both teams. Um, maybe from the Padres coming against the the bullpen of the D-backs as mm-hmm. opposed to the D-backs coming against the starting pitching. I think that there's a lot of potential for fun. These teams don't have like any bite, you know, savagery beef between the two of them. But even still, 
they're both good teams and I'm, I'm really excited to see how it transpires and i'm telling you christian walker that michael king gig might hit one to jupiter it's totally possible that he does that so keep an eye out for that um i'm excited man i'm really excited i think it's gonna be a great series i like the d-backs team i think they have a lot of good players and this is a very important series from a perspective like going forward because both have been underperforming both are kind of the same spot in the standing so how does that look like at the end of the inning who who gets the bragging rights to be like okay definitively for now one of these two will be the second best team in the division the podcast isn't over yet i'll be back in segment number three to give my thoughts on this the latest series between the d-backs and the new york yankees now i want to talk to you guys about my favorite fantasy sports app called prize picks because spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries today whether it's strikeouts rbis or first inning runs take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entries today get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason my favorite thing to do is to take Jokic over or under on points and rebounds and when that hits i love seeing money in my pocket and if you want to see money in your pocket download the app today use code locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. again code locked on mlb all lowercase for a deposit match up to 100 dollars. prize picks pick more pick less it's that easy all right, game off. We got to pause here to talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. Unique stickers. You can trade with friends to complete big albums for big prizes cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with hilarious emojis for taunting friends plus monopoly go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges a ton including their own unique mini games like digging for treasure and there's always new timed events that help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now free on the Google Play or on the Apple App Store. Game on. Just want to give my quick thoughts on that D-backs versus Dodgers series because I didn't get a chance to do a post-game pod after leaving game three. I was just feeling not very good, kind of ill after leaving game three, went right to bed, didn't do a post-game pod. So just want to give some quick thoughts on that D-backs versus Dodgers series because that series was very upsetting, very frustrating. Game two, magical beekeeper. He's got this tops card. He's making his rounds, uh, you know, around the valley right now, doing his little superstar tour in Phoenix. But Dodgers versus D backs, it was sad to see because once again, the D backs looked absolutely flat. They rolled over on their belly, and the Dodgers looked like the big brothers beating up on their little brother once again. And I thought, Something was going to change, right? Obviously, the D-backs are not super healthy right now, but neither are the L.A. Dodgers. And we know the D-backs, big additions this offseason to the rotation and the lineup. Dodgers made some big additions too, but maybe I thought the gap was going to close. Coming off the World Series appearance, already beating the Dodgers in the postseason, maybe I thought a little bit this series was going to be, you know, at least a little bit closer and outside of a game where there was a two-hour B delay, it was not a very close series. D-backs lose 8-4 to four in game one. Then they get shut out 8 nothing in the finale. Just absolutely disgraceful by the D-backs offense to just completely no-show in that game. And we know this Dodgers offense, arguably the best in the National League, leading in a lot of categories. Mookie Betts, Otani, Will Smith putting up monster offensive numbers. You need your offense to step up against the L.A. Dodgers, and they didn't. This was a great series for the D-backs to 
potentially keep pace in the NL West, right? It's still early in the season. You don't want that lead to grow too large for the Dodgers in the division. And it just continues to grow after this series. The D-backs did not help themselves out in the wild card race, in the race for the NL West crown. The Dodgers once again show that they're the supreme leader in the NL West when it comes to the regular season, and they will more than likely take another NL West crown because from what we saw this series, the D-backs and Dodgers look like they're currently on two different playing fields. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case the whole season. We'll see as the D-backs get healthier and the second half progresses. What happens to this D-backs team? Will they improve? But from this first series against the LA Dodgers, I do not I do not like what I saw from that series. Jordan Montgomery, we needed him to step up in a big way. And again, real quick, I apologize. I did a whole Zach Allen versus Yamamoto preview on my last podcast without even realizing Zach Allen was again pushed back and Jordan Montgomery was just going to start the next day. So I apologize for that if you had to listen to a Zach Allen preview. But a lot of what I said about Zach Allen can be applied to Jordan Montgomery because Jordan Montgomery is the highest paid D-back at like $25 million this season. I needed Zach Allen to step up in a big way as the ace of the D-backs rotation against the LA Dodgers. Well, for Jordan Montgomery, if you're coming in as the highest paid pitcher, you also have a level of expectation to perform against one of the best teams in the National League. This is a team that you're going to see multiple times throughout the season. And if you make it to the postseason, more than likely you're going to have to see them in the playoffs as well. So for Jordan Montgomery, for this to be your debut against the LA Dodgers, not a good sign. And for Montgomery, I'm sure all D-back fans like Montgomery. I'm sure all fans were happy when he signed with the D-backs. But one of the big reasons why the D-backs don't have their second World Series ring is because Jordan Montgomery was really good in the playoffs. And so if you're Montgomery and you want to ingratiate yourself to the fans, go out there and beat the LA Dodgers in the series finale and put another W in the D-backs win column and get them back on the right track. And Jordan Montgomery just did not do that. Fell behind in counts. Walked guys with a below 100 average, right? Gave up a ton of hard contact, including a home run to the rookie in the Dodgers lineup. Jordan Montgomery did not look good against the best competition in the National League. That's very disconcerting to see because we will see more of the Dodgers going forward. Then how about the offense? Just completely no-showing against the Dodgers. That Dodgers lineup is stacked, elite. They score runs. They get hits. Home runs, sequencing of hits, whatever you want to say, the Dodgers lineup can do it all. Walks, the home runs, the doubles, singles, absolutely everything. And the D-backs offense did the exact opposite of that. They were able to generate seven hits, but three of them were courtesy of Jock Peterson, who... I think has to bat number three when there's a righty on the mound because the Lord's Gurriel had just done nothing against right-handed pitchers this season. And Jock Peterson looks like an MVP candidate whenever he's in the lineup against these lefty pitchers. So get Jock Peterson higher in that D-backs lineup. And when you looked at that Dodgers lineup, they were getting production one through nine in that lineup. Something the D-backs have not gonna gotten enough of. There have been games where they have gone production one through nine, but over the last, what, 10 days, it feels like it's either three guys going off or maybe it's the top of the lineup going off, but then the bottom of the lineup does nothing. Or maybe there's a couple guys at the bottom of the lineup that go off, but then why is the top of the lineup not coming through and bringing those guys home? We have not seen a full lineup in a while. One through nine look like they're on the same page, and that's the difference in the offense between the Dodgers and the D-backs. Dodgers get full contributions from everyone in that lineup, and the D-backs are just not getting enough of those guys right now who can step up at the plate. Dodgers and D-backs look like they're on two different levels right now. I don't think that's going to be the case the whole season. We'll see how the D-backs progress as they enter the second half and get healthy, but from their first matchup this season, did not look good. I do like the way Blake Walston looked. I thought he looked pretty good in his season debut. Yes, that 
fourth inning, he had a pitch. He ran into some trouble, walked some guys, right? Gave up a couple earned runs. But I thought for the most part, Blake Walston looked pretty strong in this game. And I was very impressed with him. So I wouldn't mind keeping Walston around as a long reliever for a little bit if the D-backs can work that out in their bullpen. I know he just recently got optioned because the D-backs acquired a new reliever from the Twins. So we'll see if he debuts this weekend against the San Diego Padres. He's a guy, when you look at his numbers in the small sample size this season, has been pretty good for the Twins so far. He has a 2-3-5 ERA, two earned runs, 7.2 innings pitched, just a .7 whip. Does give up a decent amount of walks, but gives up no hits, basically. Not a big strikeout guy, but has been very effective this season. So very curious to see if he debuts. He probably will against the Padres this weekend and how he looks. So he's coming into the D-backs. Blake Walston getting option to AAA, but I do like the way Blake Walston pitched in that finale against the LA Dodgers. And I believe the silver lining from the series might have been that this is the first season where the Dodgers are entering a series where they have something to prove against their opponents. Most seasons, the Dodgers don't really look at other teams as rivals, right? Like, that's what Dodgers fans always say. The only team that's our rival is the San Francisco Giants and no one else. Well, if you, if you leave the postseason in the fashion that the Dodgers did last year, where you get swept by the D-backs, your ace pitcher gets shelled in game one, you have a four-home run inning to send you home. Like, the way that the Dodgers went out, I'm sure they're out for vengeance this season. So this might have been the only year where the Dodgers want to take out the other team more than the other team taking out L.A. And so for this series... The Dodgers might have wanted more than the D-backs, but for the series going forward, it should definitely be the D-backs who need to respond. I hope that they respond against the San Diego Padres, and I think the D-backs will get their revenge eventually against the LA Dodgers once that postseason rolls around. That's it for this edition of the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Come back next week for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day, and as always, stay safe. Stay healthy. Doses.